Hello friends, I'm giving this a try. I don't know what's going on with my computer, but it doesn't look like I can use two tonight. It's going to be uh, this one and then trying to flip it and make sure it works. So let me know if you can see me. Um, I'm hoping that it's working because, you know, it's just the way my, uh, the things go for me, <laughs> right? So uh, let's see, can you see me? Hello, just let me know if I'm live. Um, I'm hoping it's working good. So I don't, my, for some reason, my laptop's not working. I'm just getting the swirling ring of death. So uh, I have you on my uh, phone and I'm gonna have to switch it and flip it and hope that it's gonna work, but I can see your comments on the site. So I don't need to see myself, so we'll be okay. So hello friends, welcome to Friday night. I'm hoping I can flip this camera around and make it work because I, I don't know what's happening. So you'll get to see the disaster that is the space I've been working on, like probably f five projects all at the same time this week. So it's absolute chaos. That's what I feel like I'm living in chaos, right? So does anybody share that with me? Anybody else having uh, the feeling that you live in chaos? Yeah, I live in chaos this week, working on the uh, Peppermint Kisses class, which is, uh, right, a 70-page album, plus the layout. So I've been working on that. So I was working on both sides of my desk. And then I started working on the project from uh, or for Australia. So then I had like three things going. And it's like having a new baby in the house with our kitten. <laughs> no one told me. I thought we'd get a cat and the cat would be like cats, but a kitten is not a cat, right? A kitten is definitely not a cat. And this kitten likes lots and lots of attention. So when the kitten isn't getting lots and lots of attention, the kitten is a naughty boy. <laughs> I have every, so I was so happy, right? I've moved my, um, the store portion, the shipping portion, all of the extra stock portion out of my house into the new space. And um, I was like, yay, I got my house back. And now my, <laughs> the stairs are covered in a uh, Jimmy rigged cardboard because he thinks he can jump through the open railing banister. And then uh, he climbs on all my furniture and closet. So when you're not paying attention to him and then looks at you like, well, I'm cute and you're not paying attention to me. So that's what we're living in right now is kitten chaos. And its mother is um, not a very good mother. That's what I'd have to say. My daughter who said, I want this kitten. I'm going to take care of this kitten and then think she can social life. And I'm like, child. Uh, you need to take care of your baby because I have done all those things already. It's your turn, right? You will never have hair. You will have hair everywhere. He's actually right now, he's really good. He only sheds a little bit. So I'm hoping we and brush him like crazy. And guess who's the one who has allergies? It's not my husband. It's Vicky Booten. Vicky Booten um, sneezes 40 million times uh, and feels like I have a constant head cold. So his name is Simon. He is absolutely adorable, precious, sweet, snuggly kitty. He is a ragdoll kitten. He's absolutely gorgeous. But uh, this is a house that hasn't had pets since we had children. <laughs> so now I feel like I have a th third or fourth child, including a uh, sidecar, right? So you're allergic to cats too. Um, too fun, not fun. Yeah, but it's, it's fine. I will take the Benadryl or whatever we need to do. And hopefully the longer he's around, uh, we'll, we will get accustomed to. So that's what my life has been like. And then I don't know what's happening here. This always, I've never had an issue with it. So of course I just went live. Like I always go live and then saw that, um, it's not going to work for me tonight. So uh, we have to check this out. I have to make sure when I flip the camera that uh, you can see the thing. So I have to talk about things. Okay. So for my friends, if you're here and you're going to be playing with me in Australia, look at the project we're going to be making. So this is one of the things that I've been working on. This one is like um, 
the very best of Vicki Booten. So I took a whole bunch of products from past collections and put it together and made a um, an album that mixes all of my collections. So that's one of the things I've been working on. So if you guys are still kind of on the fence uh, and you're in Australia or New Zealand and you want to come spend some time with me, with uh, Natalie May, this is what one of the things we're going to be making. So I've been working on this. Absolutely love it. It's turning out beautifully. And then the other thing I've been working on, so you're going to notice the album that it's in currently is the um, Where To Next album because I haven't got the uh, Peppermint Kisses. I have to tell you this, right? The Peppermint Kisses album is uh, on its way. It shipped today, so it's going to arrive on Tuesday, and then they're going to get here. Hopefully for Thursday, we're going to start kidding stuff up. But I have to tell you, this is a good one. Look, just kind of look. Peppermint Kisses is going to be such a beautiful class. So uh, I've linked it. It's at VickiBooten.com. If you still want to play, I'm going to do like a walkthrough, right? A walkthrough of the project like what I've built so far later, because see, I still have to put mats and some stuff on here, but seriously, it is going to be such a fun class. So if you guys have never joined me for one of these, or you're on your 50th, because we've done quite a few, this is, it's going to be a very pretty class. So I've been working on that, right? It, I love it. I love this collection. So if you didn't get your kit yet, they're going to be shipping next weekend. They're going to start shipping. And the event is taking place in October. So VickiBooten.com, you can find the Peppermint Kisses. All of my uh, pricing is in Canadian dollars. So all you have to do if you live in the U.S. and you don't know how the conversion works is you just convert it. It will bill you in Canadian dollars how you pay for it. If it's Visa, MasterCard, PayPal, they do the conversion. So don't panic. Some people are shopping in uh, in a Canadian store for the first time. I get emails going, I don't know what happened. It billed me in Canadian dollars. All the conversion will be done when with whatever source you pay, right? So um, it's going to be so much fun. So just to give you an idea, look already. <laughs> I told Natalie I was going to make it smaller this year. Yeah, that never happened. So it's going to be a good one. So if you want to get in on that, I will do a walkthrough. I've already created 10 of the layouts. Uh, two of them still have to be glued down, but I'll give you a little peeky peek of the ones. Look at, it's going to be fun. So what can I, oh, look at this little peeky peek. Little peeky peek. Little peeky peek. It's going to be a good one. So again, double page layouts, all of that stuff. I will send a newsletter out as well, but oh, look, it's going to be fun. So that's what I've been working on this week. And a lot of you guys are asking, have you moved into the new space? I've moved into the new space, but I'm also working on my next collection, which will be the spring collection. So and then some other stuff that I, another AC jobby that I'm working on, uh, plus the classes, booking travel, taking care of the cat. It's been crazy. So needless to say, when you ask, like, when will the walkthrough, um, walkthrough of the new space be? Not for a little bit, because I'm still trying to unpack it. And this is, this is how Vicky kind of rolls. So I'll go over to pick something up. I have to go grab something at the new shop. And then I just start unpacking stuff. And then my family will be like, you said you were only going to be gone for like this long. And I'm like, I know, but I started doing this and I've been here for three hours. <laughs> and then I come home and they're like, Rich is like, what time did you go to bed? I'm like, I don't know, 3.30. Uh, and then plus we, fruit fly, uh, plus we um, had our windows replaced and then we had painters here. It's just, it, I don't know how you guys feel. Like I thought as I get older, my life is supposed to start to slow down. It's not the case, but these Fridays, man, this is when I fill uh, my cup back up. So tonight we are going to be doing some stamp, uh, stamp masking 
we're going to layer a background and then you know what's kind of fun is i'm trying to adjust all of the things because now this is not my normal setup right i have to flip my camera and hope that we're not going to be upside down we'll have to see what happens when i flip it um what, what was vicky saying oh tonight <laughs> Tonight, we're going to be doing some stamp masking. We're going to be using this stamp set. We're going to do some stamp masking. We're going to do some watercoloring with Distress Ink. We are going to do some clustering. It's going to be lots and lots of fun, right? And see the nose hairs. What, what are we seeing? What nose hairs are we seeing? What? Yes, when I flip the camera around, nobody needs to see from underneath. Gobble, gobble, right? Nobody needs to see that. Hi, Kathy. Just talking about my Australians. I am so excited. Like the Vicky Booten uh, Australia visit is so quickly coming up, right? So very excited for that. So let's flip the camera. I've talked enough. If you have any questions, let me know. I didn't say hellos to anybody. Hello, Kim. Hello, friends. Uh, look, I'm looking rough tonight. Thank you for joining me. I'm going to flip the camera and we're going to hope that it works what we're going to hope for now, right? Because like, oh my goodness, that's the other thing. When I get my new setup in this, in the um, new space, I'm putting in a filming studio because it'll just be easy to go in there and everything should be hooked up, right? So now let's hope for the best here. I, I don't know what's going to happen. I'm going to flip it and we're going to see, you're going to see disaster. So you'll really see how Vicky lives. So let's see, is it working? I don't know. Tell me friends, can you see, is it upside down or is it, what's going on? Can you see it? Is it upside down? It's good. Like my hand is going the right way because I can't see anything on my screen. So I'm working blind tonight. It's all straight. You'll see I have pants on it and everything tonight if when I flip around, but I can see your comments. So that's all that matters. But I have no clue what it looks like on the screen. Okay. So sorry, got to shake things around, get adjusted. Let's do some things. Let's make some art. So, you know, when I flip the camera, the volume, I'm going to sit down. You might have to adjust your volume. If the quality of your video isn't looking great, all you need to do is go on the, if you're on YouTube, you can, um, it's a little Let's see. Better? Better? I think that's good, right? <sighs> Some days all you do is, yeah, it's all I can do is just put my pants on, right? Are those frogs <laughs> in your pants? No, it's a blanket. Remember, I have a kitten now. I have to cover everything because I'll be sitting here working and the cat scales the back of my chair. <laughs> This cat scales the back of my chair. Can't wait for the crafty beach bash in April. Me too. We're going to have so much fun, Keisha. Hello, Dawn. How are you, friend? Hi, Susie. Oh, my goodness. Okay. <sighs> That's what I feel like. This When we finally get here and we're doing the things, um, everything that went on this week is all, right? The center is on your post-it. Perfect, right? So we're good, Brenda, right? is uh, when I finally get here, whatever. Now I don't even think about all the other crap that went on this week. I'm just happy to see my friends and it's been a long time, right? Um, I wasn't on last week because uh, it's just so much. I'm like, I just can't. I need to get some of the stuff done. And we kitted um, the Peppermint Kisses kits and then I did some unpacking and now I'm here to play with you guys, right? Hi, Dora. How are you? Hi, Karen. Maybe the cat will make an appearance. Oh, my goodness. Karen. So Rich said, well, I, I'll just bring the cat down when I get home and let him just kind of run around downstairs. And I'm like, but that's not going to work because he runs from one end of the room and scales stuff, knocks uh, projects in, trying to get on my desk now. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> oh, my goodness. He is adorable and an absolute handful. Hi, Faye. How are you? So adorable and an absolute, absolute uh, nightmare too. Can I buy the Peppermint Kisses album alone? I bought the rest locally. Yes, Kenzie, just need to get in touch with me um, because 
remember last week or when I was on last, I said, I'm going to put up, I'm going to put up a couple of just um, the kit without the album. And I will have some albums I'm going to post. I'm going to do all of that this week. So anybody who wants to order, add to their orders, all of my leftover Christmas stuff I'm going to post. And anything you want to add to your order, then I'll just put it in one box and uh, refund the extra shipping. So, yes. Hello, Brittany. How are you, my friend? So it is, he's a menace. Menace. He is, oh my goodness, freaking cat. Adorable, but it, he was, right? He was, when he, we first brought him home, he's just tiny and, oh, he's so sweet and batting stuff around. And now it is like two weeks in and he ha, is crazy. He's crazy. So I missed you too, Jennifer. <sighs> okay, let's do the thing. So tonight. My idea is we're going to do some stents, uh, stamp masking, watercolor, mixed media extravaganza. So what I thought would be fun is if we have a foundations layer background, what we're going to do is almost like a sense of clustering as well. We're going to create a mixed media background that we will also cluster with the stamp masking. And then we're going to also stamp and cut out and layer uh, stamped images on top. So this is your layout. I'm thinking that it's going to be a center design. So it could be a single photo. You could do uh, two, three by fours, whatever you want to do. But let's say that that's going to be kind of where your focal point for photos are going to be. And then I thought it would be fun if we just kind of do a drippy uh, floral kind of layered business here, right? So it will be some of these are going to be background. We're going to leave some open space and paint around. And it's going to kind of drip down here. We're going to do some stamping with the word just to kind of add um, like it's what does it say? Good vibes. We're going to stamp some good vibes on here. So we're going to create this background and your title could go up here if you wanted to. Or your title can go here if you want to. And then we can start where well, you talk about the clusters, right? Is maybe put like a little flag banner to kind of give um, your photos something to rest on. And then we can also layer some embellishments, right? In here. And we'll also layer some stamped images. So like I said, you can... Um, just play along tonight. You don't actually have to make a layout. You can just do the technique. If you are one of my card makers out there, this same technique can be used, just scale down, right? It's not going to be on a 12 by 12, eight and a half by 11, six by eight background. It'll be on your card size. So whatever you're going to do, slim line, A2, uh, you, cause you could totally do this. So slim line, right? And you could do kind of your cluster that just kind of drips down your card like this right? And then you could put your sentiment here. Sentiment, right? Or you could do it like this. And again, maybe all your floral is kind of at the top and then kind of coming down. So you don't have to be a layout lover. You could do this literally if you're like just found me here on the social medias and you're like, who's this crazy lady? This looks like fun. I've, I've got some watercolor paint and some stamps. I'm going to play along. It can be made just literally for the joy of making. There does not have to be art with a purpose. It can be art just for the purpose of making your soul happy. So this is kind of what we're going to be doing tonight. This is where we're going to start. Uh, I might be here for a while because I am literally just going to have fun with this. But it's it's going to be an art kind of night. We're making art tonight. OK, so um, you're going to create a background that's going to be like something you would purchase from like 49 and Market or one of my ready made backgrounds. We're going to create it with I'm going to use Distress Ink because I feel like a lot of people would have these. Right. The color palette I've chose is something that will work well with florals um, and matches where to next. You could use any color palette you want. So I have abandoned coral, dried marigold saltwater taffy, mustard seed, and then a green. I have, I think, some cracked pistachio over there as well and some uh, abode lawn, okay? So you can use any color palette that you like. 
I have a little sheet of acrylic, but you could use packaging. So any kind of non-porous plasticky kind of packaging, because I want to just kind of deposit a little color when we start. Oh, you know what I decided? I just decided I'm going to pick a blue as well, because in my negative space, I'm going to paint some blue. So it's going to be something that matches the collection. So it might be, let's grab something kind of turquoisey. You know what might work really nicely with this? Maybe speckled egg. I might go in with some speckled egg. I think that will be fun. I think that will work. Okay. So I also have a blue. Any kind of neutral or uh, background that you want. I will repeat the colors. Can you see them? They're all here. So saltwater taffy. Dried marigold. Because look at They work together, right? Abandoned coral. Those are like my kind of my floral colors. You could use any pinks, oranges, yellows, reds, blues, greens, whatever you want for your flowers, okay? So those are the three kind of floral colors. My mustard seed will also work beautifully with that. We'll blend beautifully for centers, whatever I want to do with that. I have that. I have some mowed lawn for a green. I said it's over here. Oh, I'm going to sneeze. Sorry, friends. Okay, it went away. I told you, allergies now with being a cat mom. Um, I have mowed lawn. If I need another green, we'll grab it. But that's what I have. And then speckled egg is what I'm going to put in the negative space. Okay, we're going to have some fun tonight. So this is what this stamp set looks like. They're smaller florals, right? So it's going to be a little bit of work to fill this space because they're not big florals. It's, it's just kind of a little medium-sized floral. Probably will use the butterflies, probably will use some of the green as well. So this is what we're going to use to create masks so that we can layer the stamps because one layer is going to be flat. And then we're going to also stamp and add some cutout flowers on top just to create some dimension and cluster. So I have post-it notes that I'm going to stamp the images on so that I can use these as masks and then I can layer my stamps where it looks like a stamp is behind one that we've already stamped. So if you're not sure what I'm talking about, this is why I need the post-it notes. I'm gonna stamp some stamps, cut them out and use this as a mask, okay? I have a paintbrush. I'm just gonna use my round. It is a number eight, I believe, a number eight or 10. I have a cup of water. I have some paper towels. I have a heat gun in case. I'm going to put all of this on foundations paper, right? I'm going to put it on foundations paper. Why? Because it holds the moisture really well. So I'm going to grab two pieces because remember, we're going to cut some of the flowers out as well. So I'm going to grab two sheets. One is my base and one is going to be a mess. And one is going to be uh, for some stamped images that we can cut out and layer. This is what I'm talking about. It's going to take a while tonight because we got to do the arts. We're going to make some arts. I am going to, I just grab some papers if we get to making the layout part. So I have some stuff handy. I uh, grabbed some things you guys were talking about for layering, some ephemera, some washi. I have some papery so that we can use these to layer later, okay? That's fun, Kim. How are we doing? Is Irene out there? I don't know if I saw Irene. I figure that it won't be a super crazy night because um, I think people are still kind of recovering probably from, for a lot of us, well, not so much me anymore because I don't have little kids anymore, but uh, back to school this week, right? Back to school this week, it's been crazy. So um, some of you I think will play along tonight. Some of you probably are just hanging out because you're exhausted. So whatever you're doing, works for me. Hi, Irene. How are you, my friend? Hello, Lizzie. How are you? Will I see you when I'm in Australia? All my Australian friends, I hope 
that I get to see a bunch of you. If you're on the fence, I'm making the projects so that you guys can see them. My daughter just started to walk. I'm so tired. How exciting is that, Inez? Exciting and terrifying at the same time, right? Exciting and terrifying at the same time. Oh, you're in Sydney? Well, so when I go, we have the cruise, which is out of Brisbane, and then I go to Adelaide, and then we are going to fly to Melbourne, and then fly to Sydney. So I definitely, for all my Australian friends, I'm hoping that people are going to give me tips on what I can do, knowing that I love shopping, I love food, I love taking photographs. I need to know all those places that I need to go and see. I love that, Kathleen. Kathleen says, I'm just hanging out because I like to hang out. <laughs> ah, that's good, friend. I love that, too. I like to hang out, too. I like to hang out with you guys. I'm hanging out, just watching. I'm exhausted from my week. I bet you, more, Robin, right? Um, I'm exhausted from my week, too. But I have to say that I'm totally okay to do this. And um, what we find is when we sit and we make the art, at first, I'm like, oh, my goodness, I'm so tired. This is going to be really rough. Uh, and then I sit down and start doing the things, and I love it. I love it, right? So um, I played in rocks today with uh, our just-turned-two-year-old neighbor boy. So much fun. I love that, Vicky. Uh, you need to do the bridge climb in Sydney. I don't know what that is. Some of the things that you guys are going to think that Vicky will need to do might not be things that Vicky will need to do. <laughs> Because that bridge climb, I'm like, what is that, right? Um, I'm like, I don't know what that is. So we'll have to see. So first thing we're going to do, you need an ink that's going to be waterproof because we're doing watercolor, right? So test it. Stamp it on whatever you're working on or on a scrap and then take your brush and water and see if it moves on you. If it moves on you, it's not going to work for this technique. You need something that is water stable. So uh, I, I have to know what the um, bridge climb is. I don't know. Sounds scary to me. Because I know when I was in New Zealand, right? Because it's the place that everybody does all the crazy bungee jump and stuff. Just so you know, that's, that's not my kind of jam, right? Bridge climb maybe will be my jam. Where I got this top I'm wearing, I think it is probably... Uh, Keisha, the majority of the places I shop are um, are uh, TJ Maxx, Winners, um, The Loft. This might be from The Loft. Uh, Old Navy. Some, a few from Sheen. I know some of you don't like that, but sometimes just because I can find some really funky, cute stuff. Um, but a lot, a lot of my Ross when you can find a good Ross store. So when you stamp on this, you want to stamp on the edge with the sticky because it's going to, you're going to use that as a little masker, right? So I'm going to stamp on that because we're going to cut a few of these out and I will stamp a few of these so that I have options if I'm layering and I need to mask two areas, right? So for right now, I'm hoping two will work and I'm going to do this guy too. Um, we did nighttime snorkeling and saw the beautiful glowing fish and coral. I'm afraid to get in the water there. Look at, you're probably all like, oh, Vicky, I didn't know she was a scaredy cat. The cruise is going to the Great Barrier Reef and everybody's like, oh, go and swim in the reef. And I'm like, I will get eaten by a shark. If it's going to happen, I'm going to be the one. Devin's always like, I'm not the one. I'm the one. Just so you know, if that's going to happen, it's going to happen, right? The bridge climb in city looks fun, but might be a lot walking across the bridge. It's hard because we're going to have very limited time, right, when we're there. So I just want to get in as much as I can. Get in as much as I can. So I'm going to cut these out. Let's start with that. We'll see. Is it enough? I don't know, but we will see. So you don't want to... Um, What's Hello Friday in Brisbane? Oh, 
are you saying hello from because I, I can't wait. I am so excited for uh, this adventure. And now like it's so close, right? You don't want a big uh, border. You want to cut this pretty close to the art, right? Because it's going to be a mask. And if you leave a border around your flowers, you are going to have a um, line where they are masking. So there is mint tape and other things. There's masking paper that you can use to cut these masks. These st stamps don't have dies. So you have to do the little fussy cutting. And even if they had the dies, if you use a die, most dies will leave a little bit of a border around your stamp. So I probably would still just hand cut it. So we are definitely doing a little stamping technique tonight. So all my card maker loving friends might be looking at some of this and going, oh, why is she doing that? That seems like butt backwards. And I'll be like, I just do what I do. You know what I mean? I, I never say I'm an expert. I'm just a trier of all the things. Does that make sense? With uh, out fear, because it's just paper and a piece of a piece of paper in my time, right? What I got to lose? Nothing. Uh, I quickly Googled the bridge walk. Oh my goodness. I want to do it. Okay. Now I'm going to have to look at what it is. The bridge climb is up the bridge, not across. It. Oh yes. You go up to the top, right? Oh, hello, little Friday earring shop. I can't wait there. I just know that the clothing and the jewelry in Australia is going to be so my jam. Hi, honey. How'd tennis go? I didn't eat a ball. Rich is taking up tennis. He is no longer going to be a pickleball player. He's decided he's going to be a tennis player again. After 30 years. 30 years. Has it been that long? Yeah. Oh, my goodness. See, Rich and I just realized that next month is our 25th wedding anniversary. I said, do you know what next month is? He's like, our anniversary. I said, but do you know which one it is? 25 years. I said, we better do something special. So now I'm just inadvertently leaving like jewelry um jewelry websites open on on the uh computer that you use you should feel how wet this shirt is i'd rather it's not it's a good thing that i wore my my funky shirt here but you know what else might happen to me what i might have a full body cramp in a few minutes oh that's awesome you remember that yes i remember that when we were dating okay see you later Okay, bye. Yeah, it is a hint, hint, right? I No, he's not coming down. My goodness. Although you could bring him down to show him the people. We could just put him under the camera quick. They would love to see the cat. I know they would. But then you have to take him away because, oh my goodness, friends. I'm like, oh, Devin is away tonight. She went to a friend's house in Hamilton. So guess where I have to sleep tonight? I have to sleep with the cat because he is not used to being by himself and he's a sucky baby. So whatever stamp set you're using, like I said, I'm using this one from where to next, but it could be any floral, anything you want to mask, right? I just think it would be fun to cluster flowers. Is anybody playing along with me tonight? You celebrated your 40th. Congratulations, Karen. That's very exciting. I want to see the kitty. We'll see. Maybe, well, he can't bring it down. Riley would have to because Rich won't touch the cat because he definitely has allergies, although he's been fine. So now I'm like, um, it's me who was like, yeah, let's get a cat. It's going to be the best thing ever. And now Vicky can't breathe. Yay. I'm glad some of you are playing along. I'm going to stamp one more of these. I feel like it just for good measure, right? Just for good measure. With the Fernwood stamps. I love that, April Lynn. I had 25 wedding anniversary. February 14th this year. Won't forget. Uh, plate driving. Oh, my goodness. Car written off. But you got a new car out of it. But that's some scary stuff. You can use any stamp, too. It doesn't have to be mine, right? You know that um, I am a, like, everybody can come to the party kind of gal. I love the Fernwood. The Fernwood uh, stamp set was a good one. You're in Australia with no craft supplies. That would be hard. 
right? But you're here visiting. I love that. Ah, uh, uh, big hugs, Kathy, right? But it is, it still would have been your 50th, but sending you lots of love, friend. 44 years, oh my goodness. I hope Rich is, st I still let him be around that long. We'll see, he's gotta be best behavior, man. As I said, when these kids all leave the house, man, our biggest task will be still liking each other. So uh, he's doing a pretty good job. So at this point, I'm going to let him be here. Well, we'll see what happens for the 25th, right? <laughs> um, I'm going to be gone for like six weeks. So uh, he's like, are you gone for the anniversary? And I'm like, no, I'm here for that. And Devin's like, well, that's nice. You're here for the anniversary, but you're not here for her graduation. I'm missing her grad. Um, I feel very bad, but I'm like, everything was booked already, Dev. It was all booked before we knew when her graduation was going to be. 51 years. Congratulations. You're using the flowers from Sweet Rush. I love it. So is everyone right now cutting out their little masks? Got to do this. This little bit of prep is going to be worth it. So I can't wait. I hope Karen Dunbrook gets to play with this because she is a card maker. And I know Karen takes a lot of the techniques. I would love to see what she makes. Any other card makers out there or mixed media uh, aficionados or uh, do you do art journaling, planners? Because I know not everyone here is a traditional scrapbooker. I want to start doing way more mixed media. Um, we can add it in our scrapbooks, right? But I do love it, love it, love it. Of course, you're playing Irene. You will be playing and hopefully have something posted within an hour of us finishing. I love it. I'm missing some of these comments. Sorry, friends. Yes to all the things. Yeah, me too. Junk journals here. I love that. Junk journals for me too have been, you know, what's funny is with cleaning up my space, right? And moving now um, to the new space meant going through a whole bunch of stuff. And I'm like, oh my goodness, I have boxes and boxes and boxes of layouts. I have so many class projects. Uh, I've made probably six by eight albums. I probably have like 50 at least that have been classes, probably more that I've taught in the class. Um, I want one video that we just sit here and go through um, my projects. I think that'd be fun just to see, like, look at how, uh, as a crafter, how things have changed. Although I think if you guys have been following me for a long time, I really think it evolves. My style evolves, but I still stayed pretty true. I've always included art in my crafting. Um, I was thinking about it from back in the years where I was doing a lot of magazine and design team work that I painted on projects and did mixed media and techniques for forever. This isn't something that I've just kind of started to do. I really have incorporated art into my uh, paper crafting. And we used to do so many altered. Do you remember we did so many altered projects and anything you could make out of paper we were right into. And I kind of miss some of that stuff. I miss my seven gypsies days of making altered projects. I have a whole whack of Tim Holtz stuff that I really want to make something that's just completely altered. I think it'd be fun. There, one more and we'll get started. Uh, Vicki, um, ever been to Pigeon Forge or Gatlinburg, Tennessee? Great family fun. I have not. I don't know, maybe we've driven through some of them. My style has gone from very simple to all the layers of flowers. I love that. My husband was here when you listed theme things you add to your art. He said, and song. <laughs> I do. Don't I, Serenity? I do like to sing. Seven Gypsies, one of, one of my favorite companies. And Maya Road and Prima. Yeah, and I worked for all of them. Isn't that funny? I worked for all of them. I did a Seven Gypsies carousel for my master's final project. I love that. Um... I worked for Seven Gypsies for a number of years. Um, I loved that. I love 
uh, it's the same, like when I use Tim's stuff, I very much love anything that kind of Paula Cheney puts her vibe on too, because Paula worked for Seven Gypsies for years. So uh, she brings that really pretty kind of vintage, right? And kind of the light pinks and, and the florals. So it's definitely my jam. Tim is going live tomorrow with his Sizzix release for Christmas. And I know that I'm ordering at least, at least three or four of the new Sizzix products. I want the new kind of, um, I love any of the holiday foliage dyes. So there's a new set of those. So I'm gonna get that. And there are a couple of the 3D uh, embossing folders that um, I wanna get. I think there's like a wood grain one and and uh, the one from Halloween I want, like the kind of shattered one. Yeah, I would like to have time to actually use this stuff too. That'd be really nice. <laughs> That'd be really nice, right? Um, and Jilly Bean, me too, I miss them. And I miss the people, like not just the, the products, but the people that I work with. Like I love the whole Jilly Bean team, Jill and, and uh, the girls that worked with her were awesome. Uh, Maya Road, all of them, right? I miss those days. I miss trade show days, getting to go see my friends. Question, did you see the Barbie movie? And how did you like it? I did see the Barbie movie. And I feel like I need to watch it again. I thought I was going to go in and it was going to be for girls who loved Barbie. You know, or women who played with Barbie and love um, I didn't know it was going to be such a kind of a social kind of commentary. Um, so once I got past that, I like the movie. I just feel like it's very conversation evoking, if that makes sense. Like, I feel like I need to talk about a lot of things. Joan and I have all of the mica stains, so be prepared for it. I'm going to be doing a whole session of how Vicky uses the mica stains. I'm going to create art, right? I have two hobbies. One is buying stuff and the other is actually using it. I love that Kathleen right there with you, you know, right there with you. My 39 year old son just went and loved it. I loved it, but there's things I, for me who really has this thing with like kindness for everyone, I, I didn't particularly like how Ken was portrayed. So I know that maybe it is not a popular um, feeling on that, but I don't think anyone should feel that they aren't seen. And it doesn't matter if you're a guy or a girl. That part of it made me sad. That part of the movie made me sad. Um, that I feel like as women, that when it's something that we're kind of in charge of and directing, that we can do better. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. And I I feel like, um, and felt worse for Alan. Me too. I just, I don't know. There's, and I, I would love to sit and I know the younger girls that I talk to have a real issue with me talking about all of that. But um, I just, I thought, yeah, like it made me feel sad. So uh, I don't know. I guess <laughs> Vicky was running the world that, uh, I just want everyone to feel seen, loved, heard, worthy. So that would just be my kind of thing. Okay, let's do the things. You ready? I don't know. And I came out of there going, because it just, I, I did not know what to expect, I guess is what I would say going into that movie. I didn't know what to expect because I, I didn't understand the whole like everything behind it, it, but it's kind of how I felt is that, uh, I don't know. And he was kind of dumb and I don't understand that either. My Ken wasn't dumb. My whole Ken and Barbie kind of thing wasn't like that. Right. There we go. So remember, we're going to build this kind of pattern right here. So I'm going to start with a couple I want. So when you think about it, so this is going to be lesson time with even kind of the graphic or the, not the graphic, but the design of this is you want to decide how you're going to fill it in and where it's going to taper. 
So I want it to kind of not taper in the center, but mine is going to kind of taper down to the left. And when I do it, it kind of like snakes. So the pattern is going to kind of snake. So how I'm going to start this is I'm going to stamp a couple of these flowers where they're not overlapping. All right. I'm going to layer a couple of these, right? So they're not um, overlapping. It is a conversation starter. And even with all of what I just said, I'm still open to listening to maybe why I'm wrong, right? I'm totally open to the conversation. And I feel like it, it's a good thing that, right? Hi, Libby. How are you? So I am going to start with my first flower, maybe right about there. Okay. And I'm going to turn my stamp and maybe do one right here. Right? Because these are the ones that are going to be on the top. Right? This is going to be the top layer. And then maybe one right here. And maybe one right here. Just commit. Let's see what we can make. And maybe one right here. Do I want any more on top? Maybe another one. Like that. So let's start with those, okay? Um, let's do a couple of the smaller ones. And then we're going to fill in around, okay? So you see what I'm saying? So don't go, you have, it's going to be kind of like a V, almost like a V, but like a crooked, crooked leg, crooked leg. V. I'm going to start with that. Now we're going to mask and start filling in a couple of flowers. Okay. So let's grab our masks. And then you're going to find. Boop. I'm going to mask that. And we are going to mask this one. Any questions so far? There we go. All right. So now we're going to stamp one of these or two of these. Because we could double mask, right? I'm going to start with one. There. Okay. Go see. And now, do do. fill in it's like fill in the puzzle in right like where does this fit See what happens, right, by masking. So let's put our mask back on and fill in a couple of those little flowers as well. I don't know. That guy.
Nope. Nope, they can't. How are we doing, friends? Yeah, post-it notes. I just put on post-it notes. You, Like I said, there is masking paper. You can buy fancy paper. I don't think you really need it. You can use a post-it note. So do we want to do... I don't want too many of the big flowers because then they kind of overtake, right? So we have these little guys that we can fill in. We have leaves we can put in here. But I'm going to try... I'm going to do one more and leave some open. We want some negative space for sure. And don't do too much. Know when to stop, right? Know when to stop. I'm going to put this guy right here. And maybe one of these guys in here. Know when to stop. So remember, too, for some of my card makers out here, we have a lot of paper crafters here, right? Um, a lot of paper crafters might not be big stampers. Who out there is likes to scrapbook, but you don't do a ton of stamping or you're kind of newer to the whole world of stamping? Because I bet you there are uh, a few that are newer to the world of stamping. So see what happens now. We have front and back. And kind of this fun little thing going on. This guy can kind of just be out here all by itself. Uh, not much of a stamper. Have a ton, but don't, don't reach for them. Um, I love stamping. Me too. I love stamps and stencils. Are my jam? 100%. I love them, but I have to say, I don't necessarily like the same kind of stamps other people like, because I really like stamps that um, are more florals and things that can work for backgrounds and for mixed media. So do you see kind of how it's coming together? We'll fill in a little space here, a little bit up here and a little there, but I don't want, I want negative space when we go to fill some of this in. I want some negative space in here. Um, and you're going to see, you're going to see why. So what else do we want? We got that guy down there. Loving it. We need to fill in a little bit of space right in here. So let's mask some of these flowers here. Do you guys have any questions? Well, I'm doing this because I'm going to look at the computer in a minute here. After I put my little masker on. And Amanda, what kind of stamps do you buy? What do you feel like you um, lean towards? Because I know that what I there are certain things that I miss now in the world of dyes and in the world of stamps. Be, because I want to make my art on top of it, like mixed media art. Um, I love floral stamps. I love a larger and open space because I want to make the backgrounds and I want to paint them. And I want to use the stamps and dies and cut from my own art backgrounds. So I find that used to be a thing, but I don't find that a lot of stamp makers make as many of the stamps and such that are great for um, people who want to cut out their mixed media art right? I buy stamps, just don't use them. I buy a lot of things that I never use. I don't do too much. I buy lots of flowers, text mostly. Me too. I love that. Stamps and stencils are my thing. Me too. Because I feel like the art is there for you. I don't really have to do a lot of thinking. Like it's all built right in there, right? Um, so I want like something in here, maybe that little one that's going to be kind of a standalone but we also have leaves and such, right? And we're also going to layer. Don't overdo this, okay, friends? When you're doing this, don't overdo the stamping. So I'm going to leave that kind of there. Oh, 
and I might do uh, one more layery kind of one up here and then we're going to start painting. Because don't forget, we still want to die cut and layer some, right? So if you fill all your space, and I, that's what I would have to say, one of the biggest things, feedback and golden, golden nugget I can do or give you, share with you, is don't overdo it. A lot of people just don't know when to stop. And they're having so much fun, <clears throat> they just keep filling their work area with art. And then when you want to layer or build, you have no space left. Because you, you kind of forgot that, hey, I can do more of it on another page at another date. <laughs> I don't have to put all the art on all of the things in one session. So uh, know when to stop. That would be a little golden nugget is know when to stop. I love these on the stamped areas, right? Hola, Selena. Our girl, Natalie, if you notice, is not here because Natalie is on, on vacation. I don't know if she's on an airplane right now or she's already hit her destination, but so excited for her. Okay, let's do the things. Stopping is not my favorite part. <laughs> I love it, Sarah, but you know what I'm saying? Like you kind of have to, you want your art, like you, it needs to have like a little bit of a rest in there too, right? So it all kind of sings. Let's do another one here. Oopsie, I didn't completely stamp that, but we'll just go with it. We'll put another one of the little flowers on top. And maybe one here. And one here. And I'm going to stop. We're going to stop and we're going to paint. Love it. Love it. I'm a liar though. Maybe one more. Maybe one more. That is not on where it's supposed to be. And you can keep the little masks, right? You don't have to recut these. Just put it with your stamp set. Put it with your stamp set. See you later, Brittany. Thank you for coming in and saying, um, hello, my friend. I miss you. Isn't it funny? You're like, okay, where does this fit? It was cute. Riley and his girlfriend uh, had a, a Lego date. And they had a bottle of wine, because he is 22. Bottle of wine, and they built the uh, up Lego. And then I was jealous, because I'm like, Rich, I want a Lego date. I want to build, I love building Lego. When my kids were little and it was Christmas, I was the Lego builder. Is there anybody else out there who was the Lego builder? I built the Lego. Better do that quick. I'm going to stamp right on top of it. And I would have ruined everything. Close enough. Probably going to cover some of these, but. Okay, let's paint. That was me. I built a pirate ship in a Simpsons house. I love that. I built, I built a haunted mansion, the police. I built so much Lego, all the Star Wars, all of it. Has a whole room full of Lego. He loves it. I love it, Simone. Right? That's awesome, Jennifer. My fave Christmas. We lost power, but my son got Hogwarts. Lego from Santa and him and I built it all day. I would have loved that, Amanda. I would have loved that. I love building Lego. Okay. So I think what will be fun is I want to show you the filling in part. 
So we're, I'm going to start. It's crazy, but guess what I'm going to start with? I'm going to start with the negative space. And I'm going to build it in with the speckled egg. I really want to start kind of with that. So there's a couple things you could do. If you want this to kind of be raw, we could put the ink on and you could kind of drip it and start filling it in. The one thing we didn't add are the leaves, but I just decided I'm not going to do them as background. Any leaf that I do is going to be cut out and I'm going to do that. So make sure whatever you are inking on is clean because sometimes I've used these already. Hi, Misty. I have one of the Disney castles. It took you three weeks. I love it. I just want to build it for everybody else. I don't need to keep it. I just want to build it. <laughs> Somebody else can play with it and take it, right? You're 82 and still play with Lego. I love that, Carol. My friend Angie builds a lot of Lego in her, for, in her studio. Uh, Angie Blom. Uh, if you guys are not familiar with Angie, you need to check her out. She does beautiful uh, stamp art and printables. And uh, yeah, I love Lego. Okay, so when you go in here, we're going to make a paint. And that's all we're going to do is add some water to the Distress Ink. And now I have a nice little watercolor. So what I like to do is a wet on wet technique. So I'm going to go in here and I'm going to float some water and then I'll float my paint into it or my ink into it, right? So I want some open spaces. I don't want to cover everything with water because anywhere there's water, I'm going to float my ink, but I still want some white on my background too. So if I float some water in here, it's much more forgiving when we just go and touch some of the pigment in there. So this is all being painted into a wet background. So if we go in here and really, because it's distressed and it's so light, you don't have to do it wet on wet. But I want to give you guys just kind of little heads up. That floating it in, when this layer dries, you can build some depth but I think it'll be fun to put some of this pigment down before we fill in and you just kind of tap it in there and it really makes, so you could leave these if you wanted to black and white and then your pigment could just be what you're floating around kind of in your background. And that could be absolutely beautiful. And I'll show you it because you're going to see it come to kind of life, right? So do you see, I don't really brush it. I tap in my color to kind of make your paintbrush kind of dance across your page. So see how that's starting to look already? Pretty, right? With the white, makes it pop. Again, this is speckled egg. And I'm just filling in some of my negative space. And we're just kind of letting the paintbrush dance around the flowers. Because I don't, like, it has to, how's it going to end up over here, right? How's this going to end up? We don't want this just to be a big blue blob. So if we just kind of dance and we can tap some pigment in. Float it in there. You can tap some on the background. Are we still here, guys? I just want to make sure you could be watching so you're not really. But when no comments are here, then I worry that it's not working but I think we're good, right? Put some more pigment on. And I have to say, using a color as light as speckled egg, if you are new to watercoloring, is going to be your friend because it's going to be very forgiving. 
if you go in with a really dark like prize ribbon or like a darker color it's going to be a little trickier it's not maybe where i would start and like i said it's more forgiving if you just put a little bit of water down and then feed your pigment into the water wash so i'm going to do that down here a little bit leave some white space so spots where there are is no water so that the pigment won't flow into that and you'll still have that white and then see when you just touch your brush in it fills in to those wet areas so see much easier to go in first with just water and then just tap your pigment right into the wet spaces and then uh, the water just kind of flows into it and it's much more forgiving than having to figure out exactly where to place your paint lovely and if you want it to run a little bit you could tap some of your drips down and get those kind of little drippy marks and we can go back in with a little bit more pigment and darken up some of those areas too Hello, Vicki and friends from Muggy, Brooklyn, New York. Is it Muggy where you are? I'm telling you, like, so it's hard because, like, sometimes on Friday, like, everybody kind of wants to rush through. If I just sat here and did this tonight and I didn't even finish it, but just the process of, of the painting is magic to me. I, that's where I want to get you guys, the ones that come hang out on Friday nights at first, don't really try anything. They're here, just kind of, it's fun because you're, you're home and maybe um, you're bored or uh, this is your way to unwind is just kind of hang out with the community. But I want you to get to the point where you're like, I'm totally going to do this. This is fun because you you really could um, draw the flowers. You don't, they don't have to be stamped. So if you don't have a stamp set, but you like to draw, you could put those in. You don't have to buy expensive stamp sets. This one that I'm using tonight because it is part of my collection with American Crafts um, are rather inexpensive stamps. So it is not a super expensive set. If you are a um, card maker and stamper, stamp lover, you might have some really great stamp sets. You might play with this tonight and then you're like, I'm revisiting this with, I'm gonna do it with Christmas and, and paint in some darker colors, but it does not, see, here we go. If you want a little close up, you don't have to rush through the process is the point I'm making. You can just, this would be beautiful you could just leave it with um the negative space right just painting the negative space and the other thing you can do to make it more comfortable is turn your art so when i'm going to work on this area right and i can just start filling in again with clean water tappy tap leaving some open space i just want to get you guys where you're going to try the things that's my biggest thing try the things what do you got to lose just a piece of paper and your time and you know some people will watch and they do all this so they're like well this is nothing new i've been doing this for years and that's great but there's a lot of people that are here that have never touched this or don't um feel like they have the ability to do this and i want you to see that anybody can and if you don't do it and you write right there's no right or wrong but don't do it where it's to your satisfaction the first time again piece of paper in your time what was your investment is just your time and just knowing that um you get better literally from practice and play 
just doing it, but tapping don't, it's not a brush stroke, right? We're just tapping with the watercolor into the floating water. And then you can put extra pigment in after, because as the moisture leaves and just pigment is left behind is where you start to build depth, right? But by going in, like I said, with this nice light color. So the other reason with wet on wet is you don't get the hard lines, right? If you put a little bit of water, it's going to float into that water and you won't get the dark line like you would if you painted directly on paper. Because if you paint directly on paper, your pigment soaks right into the fibers of your paper. If you put wet on wet, your pigment is floating in the water, which has already uh, softened and made the fibers of the paper wet. So you don't get those dark lines. It's much softer. And this could be a really fun area to let this drip. So to let it drip, I'm just going to pull a bunch of water, maybe get it to start. The little river to start and we'll tap it down a bit love it feed it back in and we could do another one just start another river push the water into that area and then i just direct it where i want it to go and then can just tap it down And then I would like to put some taps over here too. Be prepared because those taps can go everywhere. And then you throw your, your paintbrush. See, it is kind of right. I said that I just was going to kind of direct it. So now I'm not going to make these super painterly. I'm just going to put some pigment down the same technique we're doing. We're just going to put a little bit of pigment down. I just want a little bit more depth over in here. So just tapping a little bit more pigment into some of these areas. I have a, a Beach Boys song in my head tonight. God only knows that's what song is in my head. What's your elevator music or your little earworm right now? Anybody have a song in their head? While I'm doing this with you, that's what I'm singing. God only knows what I'd be without you. That's what's in my head. I don't know why. Well, I do. I was watching something on YouTube with Paul Rudd. And he was um, saying that that was his, one of his favorite songs was God Only Knows. And I'm like, oh, I don't, what is that song? I can't remember. So, of course, I looked it up and now it is taking up uh, real estate in my brain. Funny, right? I got nothing in my head. I always have music in my head. Saturday Night Fever. I love it. Well, you can tell by the way I use my walk. I'm a walking man. No time to talk. Yeah, always something playing in my head. And my husband will always be like, and where'd that come from? And I'm like, can't tell you, Mr. Man. I have no clue. Okay. I'm I'm happy with this. So I feel like it's time to move on to the next step, Vicky. Because so I can always come back and revisit as the paint dries and put another layer on top if I wanted to. But I am quite happy with that. Very nice. Okay, good enough.
Yeah. Poor Jimmy Buffett. Right. Mine is uh, Taylor Swift Midnight. Uh, Midnight You. Come and pick me up. Go ahead. Like <laughs> okay. So let's paint some flowers. So I always start light to dark with my flowers. I'm going to go in with, I think, the dried marigold to start. Ooh, might not be the lightest one. That's way darker, isn't it? So we'll do a palette of the two. So we have to decide, are we going to color the big flowers one color? I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to color. The large flowers are going to be in the um, saltwater taffy. Uh, the medium flowers are going to be predominantly in the dried marigold. And then the abandoned coral, I'm going to decide, right? Because it's going to be pretty dark. So I'm going to float some water, right? And then we're going to just put some pigment down, very light. It's just going to be kind of a little color wash, right? And to start, I'm just going to deposit some pigment. And then we can come as that dries and we can put some more pigment in there. So some of these can be very light wash, some a little darker. The ones that are underneath will have some darker areas because, right, if there was a flower on top, it would just be darker. So I'm going to just start with some of these um, larger flowers. And the... Um, So, right, because it's underneath, I'm going to put that darker. So just more pigment, less water, right? More pigment, less water. Is Valerie still here? I saw Valerie. I didn't see Kari, I don't think. My girl Kari not here tonight. Mm -hmm. Was she here? Did I miss her? Hello, friend. I really love this color. So this is the saltwater taffy. So just depositing some saltwater taffy. I am back. Yes, I am. Yep, and then I will be here. Pretty much most Fridays until I'm away, you guys are going to miss me again because when I'm, I don't know how easy it'll be when I'm in Australia, New Zealand to do the Friday Night Lives. If I can manage something while I'm there, you know I will. Even if it's just kind of a, maybe a travel related Friday Night Live, they might not be artsy, but I could figure out how to do some things of like what, I'm eating, what I'm I'm seeing, shopping, that kind of thing. Because it's going to be hard already. It's like even how do you get all your art stuff there, right? So closer look. Loving that. It's really coming together. Hi, Debbie. How are you? I haven't seen you in a long time, my friend. Okay. So I'm going to go in now with, let's paint the medium-sized flowers now. I'm going to put some water in this. I'm going to blend it right in to make a new color between the saltwater taffy and the dried marigold. So I'm going to put a little bit of that down in this corner. 
do 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 there we go yeah i think that could be fun right is that i'll still um check in it just might not be a traditional friday night live because i'm doing it from a different part of the world right I am very excited. Let's see, what are these going to look like now with this dried marigold? Oh, it's very pretty. Look at that. God only knows what I'd be without you. very pretty i'm going for a very soft kind of look with this right um i don't want it to be super dark and the first layer anyway if i was painting would be the kind of soft wash and then you would go in with your detail which we will i will go in with this some of these dry and i'll go over them again with our colors but that is really coming together. See? Hi, Kimberly. Kari's here. I just said I I hadn't seen Kari. Hello, Kari. Are you packing your bags? Are you going to come see me, my friend? Kari told me her September is going to be a little bit freer so I need to get her here to visit the only thing is you come to visit me I put you to work see you later Pamela okay let's put a little wash in I'm sorry if I missed some of you at the beginning. If some of you guys said hi and I didn't say hello to you. I had uh, some technical issues tonight. So um, I did not do my normal hellos. I think it is Jose. Is it Jose or Josie? Um, that anybody could do this. See, I'm tapping the pigment in. Go in light. You can always add, but you can't take away. Well, with watercolor, you can a little bit. But we really want to just kind of build, right? And then some of these we can darken up where they are underneath. So float some and we can float some other pigment in after as well okay it is Jose hard to believe it's September I agree I agree I don't know where this summer went it I missed it I missed it anybody else feel like that I'm like what happened to this summer I'm like I literally was in the pool just a few times this year. I missed summer. I don't know what happened. And I've decided I work a lot. It's I pretty much get up and I come down here and then people are asking me to feed them. And then I don't want to because I'm working and making dinner is the bane of my existence now. And then I work some more and I get up and I do it all over again. That's what I feel like uh, my life has been this summer. Work, 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 a little bit more work. I'm gonna go back and revisit. Um, the saltwater taffy. I just want to add a little bit of definition to some of these areas. Just a little depth, right? 
if that flower is underneath and we go in and add a little bit of darker, it makes the top one pop a bit, right? Like I said, I'm not a master colorer. I don't know if Dawn is still here. Dawn is a master colorer. She does some beautiful stuff with watercolor and stamps and makes some beautiful stamps. Mine is more just kind of a loose application of the color we're in. But now that the pigment has dried on top, right, we can go in and layer some more. You cannot layer depth with wet on wet. You need to let that first layer dry a bit, and then we can go in with a little bit more pigment. Hello, Dawn. And then I can also go in with just some water and blend. If I get a little bit of hard line, I can just kind of blend that out a little bit. Now, this is not watercolor paper. This is foundations paper. So you do also want to watch that you don't um, put too much friction and water on your backgrounds because you will start to peel the paper because it is works beautifully with water, but it will only take so much. The other song that is in my head is that Bill song, <laughs> you know? I love you, Bill. From like 19, whatever, 50. That's the other one that is in my head. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? And don't ask me where that one came from because I don't have a clue. Okay, I'm going to go in now with a little bit of the mustard seed. Yes, because you have if you have oxide ink, right, it is a hybrid ink. So you're going to get a whole different effect because when you add water, you're going to, the two colors or three colors that are in them are going to separate and you're going to get a whole different jam, jammy jam going on, right? Um, it's... This is not the Bee Gees. It's that I love you so I always will. Bill, won't you marry me, Bill? Do you guys know what I'm talking about? And that's my dad's name is Bill. So maybe I'm thinking about my dad tonight. But that's what song is in my head, that Bill song, which is random and weird. So now you see this mustard seed is very um, yellow. So I'm going to put it on here, but I'm going to blend in another color with it. The other thing I'm going to do is it's going to go in the center of some of these flowers. So it's going to tie it in a little bit. So like I said, this effect is very soft. It is not super depth building. Did anybody know what I'm talking about with that song? I do know, but no, you know, I remember that song. I don't know. Won't you marry me, Bill? I love you so. I always will. Somebody will find who sings that song. Because I'm sure it's probably called Bill. Um, Devin and I have been watching um, older movies, and we watched My Girl, and Rich came down, and he goes, why are you watching this? And Devin's like, what? what's he talking about? Why would he say that? And if you remember that movie, it would be because it's freaking sad. <laughs> and I'm like, don't tell her, because she won't finish watching it with me. So, and then she <laughs> was so mad. Uh, when he goes to retrieve the glasses and I'm sitting there going, mm, cause I know it's coming. It's coming. The saddest part of the movie it's coming. And she's like, that, that is not going to happen. And she looks at me and she goes, is that going to happen? I'm like, it's going to happen. And then she's like, that is the stupidest thing I've seen. I can't believe that just happened. She was not 
a happy girl. So I'm putting a little bit of the yellow on some of my uh, saltwater taffy ones because then I will get a little bit of orange, right? It will make another secondary color. So now we can go in. I love it. I'm going to put a little bit on that one. Won't you marry me, Bill? If so, I always will. I wonder if that mo was in the movie. Oh, I love that kind of halo effect. But I will soften that up with a little bit of salt water taffy. So see, by putting a little bit of the yellow in there, we start to marry some of the other colors, right? Because then that almost made the orangey color. And we could tap a little bit of that pink onto your background as well. Love it. So you know that song, Lori Scott? <laughs> I love that. Okay, I'm just going to put a little bit of wash on some of these orange ones. And what I did is just blended now the mustard seed and the dried marigold to give like a lighter orange color. And then we can, I feel like we need to paint a couple of flowers and cut them out. Okay, I feel like that needs to happen. Put a little center in the middle of some of the yellow ones. Very nice. What do we think? Pretty, right? Is there weather going on where you guys are? I have not watched the news or anything. I have no clue what's going on in the world right now. So if you have storms coming your way, be safe. You could totally, it depends how much water you used, right, Jennifer? Um, you could totally, um, you could totally dry it and build a few layers like i don't have a ton of water most of this is dry already but i am going to just deepen some of these up so they don't look so flat sometimes i have a hard time with just kind of stopping to just like everybody else but it looks a little bit flat in some areas so i'm going to just build that a little bit And then I'm just lifting it so it doesn't dry and give me a really dark line. Riley's girlfriend was coming over, so she will play with the cat. Okay. 
I laugh because I'm like, somebody needs to pay attention to this cat because I have to do some work and I can't keep chasing him around. And she's always like, I will. So thank goodness for that. So all my pet uh, lovers, right? He will outgrow that. I want him to still be fun and all the rest of it. I just would like him to not climb on my furniture with his nails out. We need to get um, his nails clipped though too. He needs to have them done. Oh, I love that. That last layer, magic. See, that's making art is so much fun because that the whole thing, right? Is um, just adding a little bit more of the saltwater taffy. Thank you. He's cute. He is, he is sweet. He is just the sweetest cat. We really lucked out. And he is vocal when he wants you to put him down. Like if we're like, Simi, you're being naughty. Come over here, you little monkey. And you'll be holding him. And then he purrs and he licks your ear and he's funny. And then all of a sudden he will meow like, okay, put me down. Um, I'm done with that. And that's what we laugh. I'm like, he's, he is not a vocal cat until he's had enough with your craziness, whatever your business is, right? He's like, okay, very nice. Put me down. Okay. One more. Do -do. I see the bad moon rising. Very nice. Very soft, pretty. Let's do some other. So what do we need to do? We need to create a couple of these flowers that we're going to cut out. So we're still going to paint a couple. I want to be able to layer some dimension now because that's my jam, right? Have a little drink. Oh, Sandy, that is not fun. I do not want to live in 114 degree weather. That is crazy. How are you doing? That is some hot business, right? That is some hot business. Okay, so we're going to stamp and paint and cut out a couple flowers. I didn't. My little thing is underneath that one, so it didn't cut, stamp very well. I don't know how many I'm going to need. I'd say, I don't know, four or five. So even tonight, if this is all we do is make a background, I'm totally okay with that. I will show you some clustery stuff. Because, like, look what time it is already. Because this is how I roll. That's how I roll. So we're only going to do these flowers. Um, yeah, that is some crazy. That's some crazy uh, temperatures. So let's just quickly deposit some water in these. And we'll drop in some color and cut them out. Excuse me. I did not use abandoned coral. Did you notice that? I didn't end up using that one. Uh, we had a very hot weather um, the beginning of the week. And then uh, now it is back to, well, I don't know if it's seasonal, but it is not as hot now. And I was thankful for it because Devin and I got to hang out by the pool a little bit. So that was kind of nice because she has gone to school pretty much all summer. So it was nice to have a little bit of time together. Just the one day I went out 
she'll always be like, uh, are you coming out? You said you're coming out. And then you started doing work. And now it is three in the afternoon. I'm like, sorry, Dev. That's what happens. I, I open up an email or do whatever. And then I am now in the thick of it, right? Into the thick of it. What is that from? Is that the backyard again? Or what were those little, uh, the um, rescue, the little duck? What was that cartoon with the duck and the, I don't remember what other animals, turtle? Do, 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 do. Does anybody remember what that show was, that cartoon? And it was a duck and uh, they were, um, and they would go rescue animals in trouble. We were watching that on YouTube the other day because that was one of our cartoons. It wasn't Wonder Pets. Yes, thank you. The Wonder Pets, right? Oh my goodness. We loved those little guys, the little duck. What else was it? A duck and what other animals? I don't remember. I think it was it a turtle. I just remember the little duck. You can sing that song. <laughs> yeah. Because now both of them are in the backyard again, are in my head and the wonder pets. He's in trouble. Right? And then they would fly off and was it a, a, a duck, a turtle, and a hamster? I love it. I'm going to, because I'm cheating. Did you guys see my nails that I just got done? <laughs> Aren't they crazy? Yeah, I loved that show. That one was okay. You know what I mean? With the kids would watch it. I'm like, I, I can handle this one. This is totally okay. A guinea pig? Who's now 20? Me too, right? In the backyard again. Yes, I like the one with the um, uh, the pirate one. Right? What do you do with the scurvy pirate? What do you do with the scurvy pirate? What do you do with the scurvy pirate? Make him walk the plank. I do sing that too all the time. <laughs> Song. We were not sad when we watched the backyard again. We could handle that. Like it was a show we totally could handle. We could handle the backyard again. Okay. Let's just paint some flowers. Ooh, that was a lot of pigment in that one. Vicky will just put some water in there. Soften that up. Yeah, Barney. Uh, the worst was that in the night garden, no thank you, and Teletubbies. Actually, it, we did not watch them. That They were not allowed in our house. I couldn't handle that. And I love cartoons. I actually never was sad when the kids had wanted to watch them. I actually love watching cartoons. But did was not a fan. Of, I actually didn't mind Barney, to be honest with you. Or Caillou. That one was a hard one because he was a little on the whiny side, right? I can only remember songs from Lamb Chop, Barney. Yeah, we had a lot of Caillou, right? Caillou. Did everyone watch Caillou or is that more of a Canadian thing? My son loved, Riley loved Caillou though. He had a Caillou doll. He loved Caillou. Okay, let's put some detail in these.
putting a little bit of that yellow in some of the centers. Now here's the other thing we're going to do on these ones, okay, because we're cutting them out so we can make a little bit of a mess. So I'm going to give this a quick blast with the heat gun and then I'm going to drip some stuff in. Diego. Well, Diego came later, but my kids were definitely Dora fans. We watched a lot of Dora the Explorer, and I loved boots. I like my boots, my boots and me. They help me swing from tree to tree. I get so happy when they're on my feet. We're best friends, yeah, my boots and me. I love my boots, yeah, my boots and me. Right? Um, we love Scooby-Doo. That was something. We love Scooby-Doo. We'd watch the old ones with the Harlem Globetrotters. Yeah, we loved Scooby-Doo. But I did not love um, Scrappy-Doo. Scrappy-Doo annoyed me. Anybody else? Like, what an annoying. I don't like Scrappy-Doo. It was annoying. The little dog. Okay, so look we can put a couple drip details on these guys. Watch, you don't get it all over you. Don't get it on the cat. Don't get it in your eye. That sprayed everywhere. And now we'll dry it. That was a big deal back in the day, right? Has anyone watched the movie, Hello God, It's Me, Margaret? So I watched it on the airplane. I don't know where I was flying to or from, but I watched it. I loved that book. I was a very big Judy Bloom uh, fan. Now I have to say, because I was young when I read that book, right? So I watched the movie and I do not remember that she struggled with religion. Isn't that crazy? Like, when I think about that movie, uh, Hello, God, It's Me, Margaret, I think more of, like, her, you know, becoming a woman, you know what I mean, getting her period, that kind of stuff. Like, for me, that was the, just kind of the struggles of, that age, but I do not remember that she struggled with religion in that book. I don't remember that, right? So now some bigger drips, and then that gives us detail on these flowers that we didn't have to kind of paint on there. So I just thought that was interesting, and I was curious if anybody else is with me that watching the movie, because it's been years since I read the book, um, is that I didn't remember that part of that book at all. So I just want to know if I'm alone with that or if you guys remember that. I don't remember that. Because that, when you watch the movie, is a huge part, right? Is her struggling with because she's Jewish and she's Christian, right? So, uh, the struggling with the family uh, trying to decide, not her parents, but more the grandparents, right? The religious act aspect of that. And I'm like, I don't know. I don't remember that in the book at all. So I thought that was really interesting when I watched it, but definitely read. I read a lot. Anybody else a, a big reader when they were younger? So dry these so you get that kind of like little halo effect. Then pick up the extra moisture. It's going to be a later one tonight, friends. So stick around as long as you want. Um, but I'm going to get the at least the basics of this done. Oh, my goodness. I'll hold these up to the camera now. The only thing I'm going to do is darken the centers a little bit. I'm still a big reader. Me too. And um, can you see how pretty those turned out with the little dots? So that just gives us a little 
extra layer of texture, right? So by doing that, um, I didn't have to be super um, specific with placement of pigment. I could just kind of drip it in there, right? And it gives us a little texture. I do a lot of, um, of audible books now, right? Because when I'm working, I don't like to have the TV on because I can't really be focused on the television when you need to focus on the creating. So I find that I love audible, but I'm, I'm, I'm a particular, like I have friends that are huge book readers, right? And they will post online people that I follow and I will read some of their book suggestions and I'm like, okay, I didn't like that book. Uh, so I'm always looking for like books that I've loved was the uh, seven, is it the seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo? I loved that book, Audible. I listened to it in Audible. I'm sure it was just as good if you read it. Um, the Brilliant Creatures one, whatever, with the octopus. Freaking amazing book. Uh, what other ones have I loved? The Perfume Collector. I think it was called The Perfume Collector. How do you keep your drips from... Be How do you keep your drips from becoming drops? Do you mean tiny, Kimberly? Is tiny or paintbrush? Right? Tiny or paintbrush, big ones are drips off the paper. But the whole thing is layering, layering, layering. So now see that little bit of yellow makes those pop. Lo remark remarkably Bright Creatures. Freaking good book, right? Oh, so good. It just, it depends. Like, have you ever done that where your friend is like, you need to read this book. Oh my goodness. It was so good. I loved that book. And then you read it and you go, oh my goodness. I hated that book. I have a lot of those moments where I'm like, oh, I, we do not like read the same things. I'm going to show you something else. Okay. Ink blending tool now. Okay. Get one ink blending tool, even a sponge, whatever you got, whatever you got. So these are stained, but they I wash them, right? Because I'm just not organized enough to do all the organization. So right now mine are just, I just wash each foam. So I'm going to do this again. I love recommendations. I agree. I just hate when I read it and I'm like, I cannot get that time back. That book was not for me. So I'm going to go in now and I'm going to ink. Let's start with one. We'll just do one. And I'm going to just add a little bit of ink on the edges just to darken some of these up. And now I'm going to show you something else I'm going to do. Just because I can get way more pigment now on that, right? And then we're going to take clean water. So I added some pigment just to darken that up. And then I will watermark again, but we'll lift the pigment up. So we can still get some darkness in there, but I can also lift that pigment back up. See, let's give it a blast of heat. I'm going to water drip it one more time. Give it a little blast first. And then I'm going to lift it with a paper towel. I just want that water to eat at that ink. And then lift it. Let's do one more. I could even go in and put one more layer of ink on that. Let's do it, right? And you you guys will see, I um, 
A lot of this technique that I do that I'm using water, I don't use oxides. Uh, only because they're more opaque. So I feel like oxides are more um, like using... I just, I have to remember what the, I just lost my train of thought. So give me a second. Oxides are more like using. What is the watercolor that um, is not completely uh, transparent? Oh my goodness. I lost the word. Uh, 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 uh. I need to remember. One of you guys are going to know. I just lost my train of thought. So there's one darker one. Let's do one more in here. Not opaque. It's the type of watercolor that has a little bit of chalkiness to it. They are like gouache. So using the... Um, see, we both said at the same time, Sandy. Gouache. By using your oxides, you're going to get more of a gouache effect because they're not completely transparent because they are a um, ink that combines dye and pigment. So you're going to get a whole different effect with oxide ink than you will with regular distress. It doesn't mean one is right and one is wrong. It's just different. Okay, and now we're going to cut these out. I might actually tap a little bit more color on top of these ones that I inked. Because layer, 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 right? Let me show you them first. I'm hoping you guys can see it. So see, this was adding pigment and lifting it. This, this is all just adding pigment, right? This one is a combination of both. So it doesn't mean I use, and I know a lot of people only have oxides because a lot of people, when they discovered distress, right, was in the oxide craze because oxides work, you can't really stamp with regular distress ink. But I have to say, if you really start liking kind of the techniques with distress that you might want to now here's the plus to finish your train of thought vicky before you go on 12 tangents the plus with the distress ink is you could buy the minis with it so if you're like i only have oxide i don't have any of the uh traditional distress ink oxides don't come in minis because the formulation won't work in a small ink cube but regular distress comes in the mini so you can buy start buying some of the color palettes in the mini set because i would have to say um if we were friends and we were out shopping and you said but um do i need regular distress i'd say yes <laughs> yes you do if you want to do all of the techniques and just i don't know have the ability to do the things I would say if you really love these techniques, I totally will back you up with spending um, the money <laughs> to get a couple more, right? Of regular. Uh, see you later, Renee. Look at, look at that. Can you see that awesome blossomness? Layer, 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 right? So I darken just a few of them so they'll pop. Let's cut them out. Oxides to watercolor, you lose the definition of the stamped image. So you clear and boss it when she's watercoloring with oxides because it's not completely transparent. So by um, heat embossing your stamped image or embossing it with black embossing powder, uh, it will resist the oxide. So you can also buff it up after and you'll be able to remove the oxide that's deposited, right? you can also remove the oxide that's deposited. So thank you. Uh, that is a great tip, Karen, because this is what we do, right? Collectively, 
uh, sitting back and that was that was a great uh, addition to the conversation, right? Is if you are doing it with Oxide, try embossing your stamped image next time because that will help with losing the definition. The other thing is when that you add water, the pigment separates. Have you noticed that, right? I, I do. I, you will find that probably nine times out of 10, I will use for techniques, uh, distress ink. I don't use oxide. So let's see now what it looks like now when we cut out this lovely flower. So when the new collection that will be coming out, I think I will be able to discuss it. So please friends, if you get an email with my new collection and I have not posted yet, please don't share it on uh, link me and share it. Let me uh, present my baby to the world. Don't be TMZ and uh, post the links to my newest collection until, cause I have, times that I'm allowed to do it with American crafts. They'll say, you can go, you can post your post with your new collection at let's say 12 PM Eastern time. So, uh, even though some of you have got an email saying, Hey, look at Vicki Booten's newest collection, blah, blah, blah. Um, and you're like, Oh, I love it. I'm going to share it. Let me share it first. Right. Let me share it first. So it's coming. You guys are going to love it. The colors are different than what I've done in the past. But for you guys really wanting theme collections, it'll never happen unless American, oh, like, I'm. do you see what I'm saying? Oh, look how beautiful that is, right? So beautiful. And now when we pop it up, and layer it on top. Look how pretty that's going to look. Oh my goodness. It's going to be beautiful. It's beautiful. It's marvelous. So it will be coming. Um, I don't have any product yet. So that's the other thing. I don't have, the only thing I have here are the stamps and the stencils. But the one thing I was going to tell you is one of the things in the new collections is a stamp and die set. So we were doing a little tester. So it increases the price, right? Because you're getting, I think you get three or four dies in it with the stamp set. So uh, I don't think that'll be the one I'll put in the kit for the class because the price goes up. But I definitely will add it as an add-on if you guys want to add it, right? Missed out on the perfect timing to create a Barbie pink for me. Yeah, I I really would like. Here's the thing I I've discovered now, why um, I hope Ranger uh, and Tim come out with some new colors, is only so they will match. Uh, some of the cardstock and scrapbook colors. That's where I find the limitations that uh, the pinks don't match a lot of the pinks that are used. So I find if you're just crafting with the colors, they're perfect. They're perfect exactly the way they are. If you have to color match is when you have limitations, right? That's what I'm finding is when I have to color match them is when I have a little bit of an issue. See you later, Kim. Look at though. Do you see what I'm saying? Oh my goodness, how pretty are these? Now, I didn't do that in the background because I couldn't control it. Hopefully one day, Michelle, like I could use two or three more pinks. Pink is a really hard color to match. Uh, but they need to be technique inks, right? I need water reactive inks that act like these. Um, it's not for stamping as much. It's for my mixed media, right? I love that. I love Tim Holtz. I love Tim Holtz. I always have loved Tim Holtz. I always will love Tim Holtz. And what I love about Tim and Ranger is, is it's accessible art mediums. Like I feel like people, if I said you need to get mustard seed or fossilized amber distress ink, people are like, I'm open to that. 
I understand what the product does. I'm going to grab that product. I'm totally game. Uh, it's not intimidating and it's not cost restrictive. So I use a lot of distress ink because it's a great product. I love the size of the palette is huge, right? And it's accessible. So I don't really start buying a lot of other, I love Gina K. Absolutely love her. I have her inks. Uh, I love her inks are great product, but I like stuff that is water reactive, like distress inks. So I find that, and I have them already, right? Look how pretty. So I love that. I do love Tim Holtz. I, I do love him. I just, you know, uh, forever. I remember the first time that I met him, I'm like, what is going on? These, all these ladies are going crazy. They were lined up outside his booth for a mile. And I'm like, who is this guy? I, I don't know who this is. And it might have been like Rusty Pickle Day, days with Tim before Ranger, when the first time I met him. But then I love him. Um, always super supportive of me. I love teaching with his products. I want to do a lot more with Distress. So you're going to see some more. I'm going to use the new sprays. We're going to have, it's, it's just hard now because... I'm going to be gone for six weeks. So for during Christmas, for sure, we're going to be doing something when I do kind of the whole free Christmas crafting where we do a whole whack of, um, I don't only do Friday night. I end up doing a couple lives in the weeks leading up to Christmas so we can sit down and craft together. Uh, I'm going to be using the new uh, sprays. So I will be carrying them in a couple of colors in my store because I want them outside of Christmas, right? I love it. Tim and Mario are so fun. I love them, right? So there we go. Boop, boop. And one more. Oh, I love these so much. The, oh, you know what I didn't do and I need a couple of? I'm going to do a couple leaves, but I'm just going to do the small ones, okay? So let's do the kissing technique because it'll be easy. We're just going to do a quick green. We will make it and then just stamp a couple leaves. I'm going to be here. It's going to be a late night. This is not going to be an early one. This stuff takes a while, right? So just deposit some green. And we will put some little leaves in here. Do, 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 do. See you later, Kari. I know it's 10 13. I'm going to be on here for like four days. Four day later, Friday Night Live. You don't have to watch all of it tonight, though. You can always come back, right, and finish it. But I kind of have to finish it now. So just build some layers. Trying not to get it all over my pretty new top. <laughs> that out. Pick some of it up. One more drip because I picked all the pigment up out of the middle. You love that I wear my art. 
I'm something else, I'm telling you. Ooh, I probably just flung that in my eye. That's okay, Kenzie. And you know what? Investing in a couple of different black stamping inks, it's not a bad idea. So Archival, I love, Gina K. Um, what is the ink? Uh, Lawn Fun has a great black stamping ink. You can do, uh, what are the other ones? Starts with an M. So see, look at the texture on that. Doo -doo. Just stamp a couple leaves in that. You do have to invest in a good stamping ink. Memento, that is the other one. Uh, there's a couple of them. Archive, oops, and do that, like Vicky just did, is oil-based. It's a little bit different, so I wouldn't Copic with it unless you let it cure. I don't normally stamp two images at once, to be honest with you, because I like the control. I'm not doing it. Is trying to act like I can rush through, but I want to pick where I am picking up the pattern. Doo -doo. So I'm going to have to say this might be a part duh. Tonight I'm going to layer this stuff on, but I'm not going to be able to finish the layout because... I have a ton of stuff that I have to do tomorrow, so I can't go to bed too late. Boop. There's ink on that, that's why. So I will do a couple of these, cut them out, and show you some of the layering. But I won't, if I sit and start building the layout, it's at least another hour, right? It'll be at least another hour, and that's too much. Search for manholes the whole time I was in Canada because of you. I love that. Did you find any good ones? I made the mistake of using Memento. Did Memento not work? Versafine. Thank you. Versafine is the one. Versafine. Um, you have to make sure it's, it is permanent ink. I always use, to be honest with you, Gina K, Amalgam Ink. The black amalgam ink, I love that one. And I use, uh, I have a lawn fawn one and I use archival. So sorry, I lied, Memento is not the one. Did you find any, Michelle? How was Melbourne? So I owe you an email, we're gonna get on it. Um, that's the other thing. <laughs> I just put an order in Michelle for um, to ship directly from Notions to um, Natalie, so I don't have to pack everything. So if there's any American Craft stuff that uh, we need sent, and it's at Notions, and you have a Notions account, but you don't actually even need to because I'm going to order it. Let me know if there's anything that I need to order that we're missing, because um, we. Uh, for all my friends that are cruising with us, Michelle is here. And for my friends in New Zealand, I will be teaching a layout class there as well. It's going to be so much fun. You see what I'm saying? Like, look at that. You couldn't have painted that. And all it is is drips and drying and layering. I don't use stays on ink. I will have to say that... Um, is a tricky ink. If you are a stamper for a long time and you can manage that, you know you need to prime your stamp with it, um, you can use stays on. But I have to say, if you are a new stamper, stays on I only use for non-porous. Like if I'm going to stamp on metal or on glass, like something that's non-porous, slippery, 
but I have to say it's a tricky ink for a newbie. If you're newer um, paper crafter, stays on does have uh, some little finicky bits. Oh, we're going to have such a good time on the cruise. So um, Michelle is waiting on me for some information because I really would like to do a prep day so we can do some paper cutting ahead of time because I don't want to spend all of our time cutting paper. And that kit, the where to next kit is huge. It is a big one. So um, I have to finalize some stuff with Michelle. And then we are going to have a prep day, right? It's just a tricky ink because have you ever noticed that you ink up a stamp and you're good? You're like, oh, it's got tons of ink on it. I'm good to go. And you go and stamp it on your project with stays on and it dries. Because it does this weird reaction, especially with acrylic stamps. So I find that it is a little bit of a finicky ink. You have to prime your stamp with it. If there's a layer of stays on on there, it will layer up and stamp nicely. If you don't have a layer of stays on on, uh, it can be a tricky ink to use. And it dries out very quickly. You have to keep that little cover on it. So I have to say, I love this. I love this ink. If you're a Copic user, it's not your best choice because it will, you will be able to uh, pick up and it will make um, your backgrounds or whatever you're coloring have a little bit of black in it unless you let it cure because it's oil-based, right? Did you know they don't sell oil-based paint anymore? I did not know that. I did not know that. Um, okay, let's layer a little bit and then we'll decide. I probably will need a couple more leaves. Hi. Let's see if there was sound in there. I am. Okay. I already took a pill. I was hoping you bring them down. We could have showed the people. You want me to bring them down? Yeah. And then we'll put them right here. <laughs> okay. So we have a couple flowers. We're going to put some layers on here. Uh, do I have foam dots? Because we need a foam dot. These are going to be popped up. Yeah, stays on um, is not my go-to stamping ink. It's not a bad ink, but it's an ink I use for its specific purpose that it will stamp on non-porous items. Like if I wanted to stamp on metal or I wanted to stamp on um, acrylic. Are you ready, guys? He's like insane. Is he a nut bar right now? Hi, baby. Hi. Come here, little shiny. Are you ready, guys? Say hi to Simon. He's a nutball. He's not going to say hi, baby. Say hi. Look it up there. Look it. Uh. Yeah, see, he does not want to be held. That's the only time Simon meows. Bye, baby. Go be wild. I get to sleep with you. going to bite my ear tonight. So that was Simon. What? No, he's not staying down here. He's all yours for right now, babe. I can't watch him when he crawls up my stuff. <laughs> Did you hear him yell at me? He's like, bye, mommy. Put me down. Okay, so I'm going to pop a couple of these on here, and you'll see. Doo -doo. Those ones we added the darkness to. Yeah, he's his little stink face. I see the bad moon rising. I see trouble on the way. Don't go out tonight, cause it's bound to take your life. There's a bad moon on the rise. You're shocked I got a cat, right? Uh, I'm telling you, she needed it, the little girly girl. So do you see what I'm saying, friends? And then we'll put some of the leaves on here. So I'm going to tell you. So we're going to finish this next Friday. We will start with finishing this layout. 
Okay. And then I'll do something that doesn't take as long. Uh, but now looking, I am going to do your homework is going to be, I want just a couple of the medium sized flowers, like about four of them because I want that down here. Like, I, I feel like I need a medium right here. You know what I'm saying? Like, look at, we need to fill in a few with that medium size. <laughs> That's what song came to mind, right? Bad moon on the rise. That is why that song probably popped into my head. So do you see what I'm saying? We need a couple of that medium size, like, but look how beautiful this is gonna be. And my card making friends, you do notice, right? That you totally can um, make something beautiful with this layer. So what will end up happening is my photo is going to go right here. Oh, and I wanted to show you, right? Before, I'm not going to show you. We're going to do it. No, I'll show you quick. So you come back on Friday. So this gives you time to do some homework, right? This is a part de. It has to be a two-parter. But I think it's going to be cool to stamp in oxide. So here, should I stamp in blue? I, I'm going to go with my original. So my thought was in to stamp in fossilized amber this uh good vibes so i'm going to show you let's stamp it on my little postie oh i love it so i am going to go in here with my head first and we're going to stamp some little good vibes in here Good vibes. I'm going to stand up. Stuff has fallen. My, oh, my space is such a pigsty right now. So I am stamping in oxide because if I tried to do this in regular distress, it wouldn't work. I love that. love it so we will finish this guy next weekend next friday but i do need some of the smaller like i don't want to fill this space with a big orange flower right so your homework is going to be to finish the bits and then we're going to come and I'm going to finish this with clusters. So you see, it's going to be a part two of this because, oh my goodness, though, I have to say, did you enjoy that, guys? Are you going to try this? Hello, Danielle. Can't wait to play along with Lindsay when you have a chance. I, I love this. Like this. And we can do a card next week if you want as well. We'll take our extras. But I absolutely love this when we fill it in with a couple of the little leaves, right? To add that little bit of green. But it needs down here, I need a, about four of the orange flowers. And then we can put our photo mat here. Layer it with a little pattern paper. And then my title business is going to go right in this section. And it might say good vibes. I might write good vibes with the 
and then we can cluster a little bit. But here's the whole thing is when you make a layout like this, does it need much more? You could literally map a photo, put a title in your journaling on here. You could put um, what would, we're gonna up this and we're gonna layer a little bit of glitter. We're gonna make glitter glue with a uh, matte medium. So you're gonna want some matte medium and some, or if you have stickles, you could use it. We're gonna make our own and I'm gonna paint it in some of these areas and we're gonna make it kind of, we're gonna encrust it with some sparkle. And I'm gonna show you that this layout doesn't really require a lot of embellishing because why would you take your focal point away from all this pretty art we just made, right? So um, I love this. This is really, we kicked it old school, like getting right back, like, look at this is, you could leave it like this if you want a flat page, you totally could. There's nothing wrong with this. But then look at just taking what we did and layering, Like, I don't want to cover everything up, right? Could be like that. I still have one more I can cut out too, right? Could be here. Love this so much. You could frame something like this. If you're like, what else could I do with this? Wouldn't this be beautiful framed? Like, create it and put it in and make your little your own little art to hang. I love it. Yes, thank you, Linda. Thumbs up the video. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to, I'm going to try to flip the camera and see if I'm upside down or whatever. Remember, tonight wasn't ideal. And there's kind of a close-up. Well, I am fixing the camera. Tonight was not ideal because I couldn't get the camera to work. And now I'm going to flip it and let's see when you look up my nose. Hi. Hi. Sorry about that, friends. My goodness. So I'm too close. So <laughs> move away. Thank you for joining me tonight. That was a lot of fun. Um, there will be a part two because I couldn't finish all of this in uh, the time frame that I gave myself because uh, we made art tonight and it was really, really, really a lot of fun. Uh, it would make a beautiful uh, handmade gift serenity because somebody would see that and go, oh my goodness, how did you make that? And you could be like, you could make one too. Come and be my friend and we'll make pretty art together. Uh, but I really enjoyed that and I can't wait to finish it. It's going to be beautiful now when we uh, put our photos on it. So now you know, you could do this totally in your art journal. I would love to. I would love to get you guys where we do a lot of stuff that isn't photo based. We just make art in an art journal or on a Rolodex or do all the things. Cause sometimes I don't even care if I put, well, Vicki hardly ever puts photos on anything. I just love product and doing things. So I very much enjoyed that. I will be back next Friday for part two of this. So um, I will clean up all my space. I'm going to make uh, some additional little orange flowers using the, what color was that? dried marigold uh, in the medium sized flowers so we can fit those in and then uh, we'll finish this page and give me your feedback. What do you want to see next week for the second part of this? We could take the same technique and I could make a card if you wanted to do that. If you're like, how would you make this into a card? Totally could do that. So uh, leave your comments below when this video is done, uh, what you would like to see for the second part of next Friday. So I will be here, same bat time, same bat channel, 8 o'clock if you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube next Friday for part two of this. And um, we can do, yeah, I could totally, I'll just stamp some extras and we could finish it off and I could do two cards, two variations with cards, right? Because I love that. Even if you're a scrapbooker, you still need thank you cards or get well soon cards or sympathy cards and uh, birthday cards. So uh, I feel like everyone should be game for making cards. So we could do that. I could extend it into a card. So uh, do a quick background and then make some cards. I love that. We already decided we're going to make cards next week out of the same technique. So the part two will be finishing the layout and then using the same technique in a 
a slimline card and an A2 size card. So I will, we'll do that next week. So it'll be fun, especially for my card loving friends. So have a wonderful weekend, my friends. Thank you as always for joining me and um, I'll see you next weekend. I just have to figure out how to end this on my phone because I end the clusters. The clusters will be part of it, right? Because I said we were clustering. So the clustering though, as a side note, is done in the art. That's a cluster. We clustered stamps tonight. And then part two will be clustering uh, our title. We can do our title block and maybe some stuff around uh, the photo base. Okay, so I, I got you. We'll do the clustering as well. All right, have a great weekend. And thanks for joining me. If you're watching, watching after the fact, thank you. Glad that you made it. And uh, I hope you take some time to make some art, right? It's just a piece of paper in your time. What do you got to lose? So have a great night, guys, and we'll see you later.